Chris here back with a follow-up video on Xiaomi's Mi Max 3. So I've been using the phone now for over 48 hours. And in this video here, I wanted to update you on various different things. So the battery life, the charge times, some performance. Just go through that quickly. A lot of questions were coming up in my first video I posted, which is the unboxing and hands-on review of that one there. So a lot of people were asking about the performance and things. One person said, can you please show Twitter? So I'll do that now. So I've got Twitter here loaded. And you can see the scrolling here is pretty good. It's smooth. And it doesn't really have any major stutters. Now it all just course dependent on your internet speeds as well loading things in but I've noticed that there's no problem with that but what I am still seeing is that full gesture lag sometimes so when you're going through various different apps it just pops up and creeps up now and then you can see at the moment I've got it's hard to see there but uh, 1.7 gigabytes free now if I just get out of that and show you of course open camera that I demonstrated in my video now there were quite a few questions people asking about the settings. What settings did I use to get that really nice smooth and steady 4K footage? So it's just simply here. So you get it off Google Play Store, download it, install it, and under video settings, this is what I've gone with. So the most important is to enable video stabilization. So that must be ticked. And then the resolution, you just set that to the highest, which of course is 4K, you can see right here. Now the bit rate, you can either keep it as default or you can go with I recommend 60 megabits per second. The higher you go, maybe the quality will improve a little, but you risk dropping frames. So when you put it at like 100, uh, then I notice that it may actually drop some frame rates here. So I wouldn't go that high. It's not really actually needed. Now the sharpness of the 4K video is not gonna be quite as good as the stock app because the stock app, app is uh, recording a native 4K. And what happens that when you're using this app here, it's going to actually crop in a little bit because of the electronic image stabilization. That is just simply uh, the way it works there. So I've noticed that with the performance, it is really good. A lot of comments asking about the screen and other devices. So for example, the Redmi Note 5 I have right here. And I think the Mi Max screen is better. Now this one here, the whites, they tend to look a little bit bluish tint. Now this is happening with the Redmi Plus, uh, sorry, the Redmi 5 Plus, which has the same screen and then the uh, 6X. So this screen, just a little bit of blue tint. You can pretty much correct it anyway through the settings. And another question that popped up was, what would you get? The Mi Pad, actually this one came up quite a few times and it didn't really, I don't really understand why people are asking this. So very different devices here. So the Mi Pad 4 has a really nice screen. It's much brighter, about 100 lux brighter than the 450 you get or so with the Mi Max 3. So you can make obviously voice calls on this one, you can't on this. I don't think you can make voice calls with the LTE version either, even though of course it's gonna have modem support because you can connect up to the internet with the 4G bands, very limited 4G bands, but I don't think there's actually a dialer included in it. And of course you need a headset. Now the speakers on this one, I won't give you a sample, but they have the dual firing speakers and they do sound a little bit better to me on this one. So the cameras, the definite winner, of course, is this right here. So the camera performance on the Mi Max 3 is very good. It's a huge step up from the Mi Max 2. And that for that alone, I would upgrade. If you like this format of phone, you like the big, super large phones, and that is the main reason I would go and move over to this, because a lot of people are asking me, should you upgrade? I'm a Mi Max 2 user. I saw your Mi Max 2 review. Highly recommended to, to go for that. So you're gonna gain so much because you're getting, battery life is actually about the same. I'll get into that and I'll show you examples of my battery use in a second. So more or less, it is the same there. The voice call quality sounds pretty much similar to me, but one thing to note about the call quality, it's crazy. It is better than Xiaomi's Mi Max, uh, sorry, the Mi Mix 2S and better than the Mi 8. So their flagship phones, this earpiece to me sounds a lot better. The microphones also sound a lot better as well in video, which is crazy because that's their flagship. Their flagship Snapdragon 845 devices are worse off sound-wise compared to this one right here. So yes, if you are looking for an upgrade and you're not happy with the cameras on the Mi Max 2, I know the video is the worst thing because I always had to carry around this here, which is my Samsung Galaxy S7. And a lot of people are going, why are you using two phones? So what I would do is have, this is my main phone, Mi Max 2, and this main, mainly for the camera. So the Galaxy S7 has a sensor that is very similar now to the one we have in this. So the dual pixel face detection autofocus. And it was mainly for the video, for the optical image stabilization, the sharp video and the better audio quality and a rock solid focus is the reason why I always went with this phone here for taking any serious photos or video. And now I can thankfully 
finally put my Galaxy S7 to rest and I'm just going to go with this phone right here. And then the step up in performance is really why I recommend going for the Max 3 over the Mi Max 2 if you're now. I'm noticing the difference. Even though I said, okay, you get those full gesture stutters that I am seeing coming in. Other than that, it is very smooth. The performance is a step up and you do notice it. It just feels a lot more fluid, loading things up. It doesn't take as long. So I will show you the battery life I'm getting out of this. So right here, this was my full test. So this is a second cycle of the battery. In the first cycle, I got about 11 hours of screen on time. This one here, I managed to get a 13. So this is best case scenario. So it was on wireless about a good 70 to 75% on the time. So if you're on data, then of course you can expect lower figures here. So you can see that it went down quite steady. This gap here is where I went to bed and I didn't use it of course. So you can see that the screen was not on it, but it was waking up a couple of times. I don't know why it woke up like it was almost looking to unlock with the face unlock on there. And that's why you see these little tiny bars you can probably see there where it actually wasn't in a proper full deep sleep. Even so, over about 12 hours, it only lost 3%. So the idle battery life consumption is really quite good on this. So you can see the screen on time there, that's 13 hours and 33 minutes. And I'll show you my use. It was rather heavy, so I did play PUBG. I was gaming quite a bit and I played a few other games, but for some reason, this doesn't seem to be that accurate. The times are a little bit off. I was using Chrome quite a bit as well and YouTube. So here's a PUBG total use of two hours and 20 minutes, play quite a few games. And the gaming performance in PUBG, I find to be perfect. HD setting, high frame rate, like I showed you in the unboxing video, is really smooth and I didn't notice any major status or lag and I've been able to win a couple of games with it and it's just a lot better with a larger screen I feel playing games like that. But I still prefer the Mi Pad 4 because the Snapdragon 660 is faster with that one there. So Chrome was on for three hours, I had three hours of use of that in two minutes. And YouTube, it's only reporting 37 minutes, but it should actually be about two hours, if not more with YouTube, because I was streaming uh, at 100, sorry, 1080p. And when you stream for about one hour, you lose around 6% battery. It all depends on your screen brightness, of course. Now, you're probably gonna ask that next. Well, what was my screen brightness? It was set to about 200 nits, what I always test with. So the same brightness I always test with along all devices. The automatic brightness, of course, is disabled. And it's somewhere around this level. So it's about 40% battery is where, I, uh, sorry, screen brightness is where I have it set. So it's not super bright and neither is it super dull. And this is without any battery saver. Actually 13 hours and 41 minutes was the final score there. So really good battery life. It's super solid battery life. It's about what I was getting out of the Mi Max 2 when I first got it on the Chinese ROM. And it, you can see there, there's the stats. This is using GCM battery monitor. So I didn't make many voice calls. Only four minutes of voice calls in total with that. I'm not a big voice call person. I obviously, I send most of the time actually WhatsApp and things like that, so that is why. So there were questions about the wireless speeds, so yeah, I didn't point that out in the video, but you can see here, they're pretty good. This is the maximum you can get out of a wireless AC router. So about 260 megabits per second. On the Snapdragon 845 devices, I can get over 400. So you do notice a difference there because this is really basically a low end chipset or mid range one, you could say. And 4G speeds as well are fine. Signal strength is fine. And as I mentioned before, the core quality, better than the flagships from Xiaomi. And to quickly mention the charge time. So it has a large 5,500 milliamp hour battery, but it charges very quick, just as fast as say the Mi Mix 2S. In two hours and 16 minutes, it will fully charge. So it's Qualcomm Quick Charge 3 charging, and it will take you from about 7% battery to about 34% battery in 30 minutes, which is gonna give you about a whole day's use. So this is definitely a two to three, three day mobile phone. So impressive battery life and very quick charge times. Now a lot of comments were in regards to the cameras. Obviously it is a big step up and it's very similar to the Redmi Note 5. In fact, this is really just a large Redmi Note 5 with a Type-C port. That's what the Max 3 is. And that's always been the Max formula when you have a look at the previous models like the Redmi Note 4. Now that was the Mi Max 2 basically, the same kind of spec there. So low light photography, it does all right to get a bit of grain in here. Where I've noticed though it's not very good is the low light video. So the front facing camera drops frames and it's very grainy. And I'll give you just these two selfie samples here. So this is without the LED flash. People were asking as well for a sample of that. So without it you can see there's a lot of grain. It looks really, it's not a good image at all, isn't it? It's bad. And then with the LED flash, it's not super bright, but you can see it's illuminated my face here quite a bit more. And it gives you just a little bit better detail, but still, a bad photo. Now this is in 
pretty much darkness. It was 11 p.m. at night when I took this photo. Now I'll give you a sample for video right now on the front facing cam. So this is what's happening with the front camera. I've noticed that in low light, it's dropping your frame. So I'm indoors here. It's not well lit at the moment. I'm gonna go outside where it is even darker and we can already see that it's grainy and it's dropping frames. So it's not a nice smooth 30 frames per second. So Xiaomi's got some optimization to do with the video and low light, especially with this front facing camera. And this is a sample from the rear camera now. So it's about 11.30 p.m. So very dark. I've turned off most of the lights outside and just left one on. So you can see that it's not great and it never would be great. Even with a flagship camera, this is not gonna come out amazing. At least it's not dro dropping any frames like the front facing camera. I have noticed though, however, that the focus, it doesn't tend to be as good as it is in daylight, of course. Here, it seems to struggle a lot more. So this video is now being shot in 60 frames per second. I know my video is encoded at only 30 frames per second, but the point is just to show you that the focus is not as good as the 30 frames per second focus. So I put my hand up now, you can see it all. In fact, look, it's struggling. There we go, it's got a lock, and it locks onto the background there, but it's just not as good. It tends to be quite a bit of focus hunting with 60 frames per second mode. So hopefully Xiaomi's gonna be able to patch this because if you've seen my samples of the 4K 30 frames per second, the focus there is just rock solid. It doesn't do that hunting as you can see now when it pulses in and out, which is really quite annoying and really does ruin the video. One of the other questions that popped up was the front face unlocking. So I found that it works in fact one of the best for Xiaomi phones and I'll give you a little tip here that when you take the photo, sorry, with your face actually, when you're setting it up, you can see now it doesn't recognize me, there, boom, it unlocks, that's how fast it is. But the tip is that when you get that photo, make sure it's not blurred and you're in really good light. So if it, you see it blurred when it shows you in the, that example I showed in the unboxing, just make sure it's a very sharp image and once you get a good image of you, it will unlock very fast. Now I did notice that even when I put some sunglasses on that it will unlock just as fast, in fact, maybe even faster. So that's, to me, a sign of how insecure it really is. So if you're wearing sunglasses that are blocking all my eyes, basically, it still unlocks. So I gave you a sample in the unboxing video, the hands-on review of PUBG, and that just runs perfectly fine, no problems whatsoever. What about a newer game? This is Asphalt 9 that a lot of people were asking about. So I've got it on the high settings. So I'll just show you quickly. So when you go into the game settings here, under the display, I've just forced it onto high quality. And you can see now with the gameplay that it looks really good and there are no major lags or stutters. Occasionally you see the frame rate dip down a little bit, but the Snapdragon 636 is handling this perfectly fine. World of Tanks, Lineage 2, Hit, all of those kind of games there, all super playable and really good with this massive screen. Another question that cropped up was the speakerphone. So in calls, I did test it out and I had the speakerphone on and it works just as good as the Mi Max 2 right here. No problems with that. I can hear that in fine and they can hear me, which is the important thing. So the mics are working with the loudspeaker really good. And why I'm showing you the bottom of the phone here, this was another question that was asked a few times, is the bottom chin bezel. The bottom bezel, is it shorter? Well, you can see here that it is shorter than the Redmi Note 5, you can see there's a difference there of approximately two millimeters or so shorter. And that just gives to me the Mi Max 3, a little bit of a better look to it, in fact, not having that chin so tall. So there we go, the Mi Max 3 for me is a really good phone and this is gonna be my new main phone. I am gonna leave this behind, which is my, sorry, here it is, so many phones around. The Max 2, I'm gonna end up probably just selling that one off because I'm only using this phone now so you've got really, really good battery life. It's amazing, you're gonna get about three days at least out of this, and if you're continually using it, and you're a very demanding user, then expect screen on times above 10 hours, as long as your brightness is not too high, and you're not recording lots of video. So the weakness of this phone really has to be low light video on the front facing camera, dropping frames. This can be fixed with software, but I don't see the actual quality of selfies improving in low light. They're not really that good at all. Rear camera as well, low light doesn't look amazing. 60 frames per second video in 1080p is great to have, but the focus is all over the place. And then that occasional 
UI full screen, full screen gesture lag that I have seen that has popped up a few times. It's not always there, it just rears its ugly head now and then. It's not a major for me, but it's a really just a larger version of the Redmi Note 5 Pro, which is a fantastic mobile. And of course, this just has the Type-C, better battery life, and the cameras, they're very, very similar. So similar in fact that I will not be doing a comparison. Thank you so much for watching this follow-up video of Xiaomi's Mi Max 3. And I do hope to catch you back on the channel with further up and coming videos. Bye for now.